girlfriends, doing beautiful little cartoons which she's posting on Facebook. But she's not here to do her job, so I have to do it for her. Uh, I met Barbara Fugate only a couple of days ago, but I've been aware of her presence in the art community for over a couple of decades. Uh, she teaches drawing and painting at Gage, but she's been doing that or its predecessors for far as I can remember. And um, she, uh, she got her Master's of Fine Art at the University of Miami in Ohio. And uh, she has had individual shows in museums, galleries, so on, around the nation. Uh, her drawings are gestural, expressive, powerful. Her focus is the human form. And uh, she's uh, an energetic painter. For today, she'll be an energetic drawer. <laughs> uh, she's exhibited in Kentucky, Washington, New York. And her work has been published in the best of drawing and sketching by Terry Sullivan, landscape painting by Mitchell Bala, and contemporary drawing by Margaret Davidson. And in addition to uh, teaching at Gage, she also conducts art workshops in Washington and in Mexico, more of which later. Quote, drawing and painting is about discovery, revealing a reality that is ever more authentic and genuine to me. What is most inspirational is the transient nature of life. Things dynamic, moving, and in transition. Please welcome Barbara Fugate. Thank you, Steve. And uh, you guys hear me? I'm mic'd up. Is yep. that working? Uh, so uh, hopefully I don't get too loud, because my teacher voice is going to come on. And I'm mic'd. <laughs> so watch out. Uh, so uh, thanks to Steve and to Eve, who uh, was the first per person to contact me to come here. And, um, and it's, uh, so thanks for having me here. And, and I even have some fans that arrived. I didn't know some folks uh, who have known we go way back. And thanks for being here. A uh, few of which are not members of your of IFA, so you got. I brought you some new blood. <laughs> uh, so um, anyhow, so I'm going to show you a PowerPoint uh, review of some of my work, so some selections of drawings and paintings, and give you a little background on my focus and my philosophy, really, of how I make artwork and how I look at artwork. What's important to me. And then um, for the demo, I thought I would do a uh, portrait drawing. And I always work from life. I do not work from photographs, ever. And they just do not interest me. They just don't interest me. And I know that a lot of people do. And so and I, that would be very conven convenient for me if I liked to do that, but I don't. So uh, I always work from life. So when I was asked to give a demo, then I thought, well, portrait. And uh, so Bob here has, has uh, volunteered to sit for me. So I'm going to do the PowerPoint, show you some images. If you have any questions at any time, please just ask. And, um, and so I'll do the PowerPoint, and then for the first half hour, and then the second half hour, I'll draw in front of you, and we'll see what happens. As you know, sometimes it goes south. <laughs> so do it as I start over, right? And uh, so is life. So. Um, do we, we yeah, the lights need to be lowered. Yeah, that's better. And, you know, I guess I, I'll, have, I'll be standing over here to operate this. So, um, yeah. So I, I have been teaching for quite a while, and my teaching is all based on uh, gesture drawing, and as is my work. And in the... Uh, several decades that I've been teaching now, I have developed and continue to develop uh, my thoughts on gesture and what gesture means. When I was in college taking my uh, drawing and painting classes, in my drawing class, they, you know, the model would come in and 
Then we're told to make these short, you know, drawings, quick drawings for a minute or whatever. And then, and often, the professor would walk out the door and come back later. I've never forgotten that. <laughs> I never do that. <laughs> and uh, so I just thought, well, okay, I don't know. These are just supposed to be fast. But I never, you know, it always sort of, uh, I had this question in my mind, why am I doing this besides, I get like loosening up, but there's got to be more to it, to making a figure drawing in one minute over and over again. So I bet a lot of you know that book by uh, Nicolaides, The Natural Way to Draw. You guys know that book? Yeah. 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 Written in the 40s. And that's kind of the gesture bible. Maybe you're aware of that. And, uh, and I came across that book. And that is what turned the light switch on for me. And it hasn't tur got turned off. It hasn't even dimmed. It's only gotten brighter. My interest in gesture drawing. So Nicolaides goes into quite depth about gesture drawing and how he practiced it in some exercises he had students do. And uh, so, the, and when I was in back when I was in college, then I read that book and I st started practicing some of those exercises that he has in the book. Then I started to teach, and I started with those. And then I have taken off from there and have I, have, I teach 10-week courses in gesture drawing. If you can imagine 10 weeks and you make no drawing longer than five minutes <laughs> for 10 weeks. And uh, so I've got a lot of exercises up my sleeve to keep you entertained and working hard, as, as a few in here can attest to. And I do, ten, I do weekend workshop, weekend intensives, and often they're gesture drawing. So 12 hours of poses, one minute, 30 seconds up to five minutes is the longest one. Most of them are one minute. And there's just so much that we can explore in gesture drawing that is um, as much about ourselves as the materials as the model. And um, so I have up here at the top, it's more about how things are rather than what they look like. And that, in, it, somewhat in a nutshell, uh, uh, begins to, to uh, describe how I think about drawing and painting in general, uh, or largely, and, then, and also about what gesture drawing is. That it's not what things look like, but it's how they are. So, and, it, and when I talk about this with my students, often I'll say, um, imagine you come up to that you're going to meet someone. And, and, you, and you say, hi, I'm Barbara. Uh, and Lee says, hi, I'm Lee. And I said, how are you? And then you have a response, right? Versus I come up to Lee and I say, hi, I'm Barbara. She says, hi, I'm Lee. And I say, hi, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's very different, don't you think? So that's how I look, I look at drawing and I approach the paper and I'm, and I'm responding to the model. It's how, not what. How are they? Not what, what do they look like? So I start with the how first. And, and I always hope to end with the how, too, in, the, in my artwork. Uh, for me, uh, movement and action is one aspect of gesture drawing. And I think that's the one most commonly that people think of. Like, if you say gesture drawing, it's like, oh, it's fast. And it's about movement. And the drawing should show action. But there's this, that's just one in my mind. And what I teach and in my drawings, that's just one just sort of the beginning of that whole exploration. There is so much more than that. And there's things like compassion, uh, the compassion that I bring to the artwork, uh, which involves life experience, right? And you have to have it to have compassion. Empathy, an empathetic choice of materials. So you choose your materials uh, because for an empathetic reason, um, that it, you can get at that how better. Uh, and then responding, that I'm always responding, always responding, 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 not uh, trying to analyze. And, and this is, is essential to gesture drawing. And over and all, above all, it's really kind of to encapsulate all of that, it's about participating. That I am a participant in what I do. And so that involves my whole self. My whole, my body physically, my mind intellectually, my gut, so my instinctually, right? So it's like my heart. So all of that is involved in the work and with the materials. And as I as I tell my students often, 
when we draw, make gesture drawings, but when we draw or we paint, when we write poetry, when we do any of those things, it's a um, three-way conversation between myself and my materials and what I'm observing. And for what you're going to see here, mostly it's people. So it's between myself and the materials and the model. Three-way conversation. And that's, and I'm just one participant in that. Uh, see if I hit the right arrow. Yeah. So here's a collection of, um, oh, I should have checked the color correction. A little bit, things are, well, the color's not too bad here. But anyhow, so here's a collection of my artwork just to kind of give you an overview of things that I, that I do. And so this is a gesture drawing here. That's probably a two minute gesture. And that's 24 by 36 inches. That's my general size and that I work. And then this is a mixed media drawing and it's around 30 by 40 inches. It's soft pastel and watercolor and sepia chalk. Uh, this is out of my sketchbook uh, of a Komodo dragon uh, uh, drawn from the Komodo dragon that lives at Woodland Park Zoo. <laughs> and I've been drawing at Woodland Park Zoo for over 20 years. I have buckets of sketchbooks from that. <laughs> and I teach sketchbook classes um, and often we go to the zoo to draw the animals. And, uh, and then one in the upper right hand corner is a self-portrait oil painting. And I think it's around 24 by 24 inches. And uh, this is a 24 by 36 inch uh, gesture drawing before I made a portrait drawing of, of this guy. And then that is a um, plein air uh, from um, Susha Island. Anybody been to Susha Island? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that meant, because you can only get there by boat. Yeah. Yeah. Your own boat, no ferry. And uh, so some friends and I um, hired a guy to boat us out there. We stayed for several days and painted. It was amazing. And so that paint, that the the painting is actually smaller than what you see there, but because uh, you you know you got to hike it in or boat it in. Okay. So and again, if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand. Just ask. So here's I'm okay. I'm going to go through sort of sections, figure drawing, and um, and I'm going to watch the clock, which I can see right there. So because we end at I end at three thirty, right? So okay. So I might go kind of quickly. So. Butt in if you have a question. So these are, this is a gesture drawing, a one minute gesture drawing, 24 by 36 inches with charcoal um, of a figure model. Mm. And so I uh, hope you can see that there is movement in action, and, but there's uh, more things going on there that has to do with um, time passage and history and things like that. And here's another one. And as you can see, I, I uh, often crop the figure because I like work, I prefer working close to life size <coughs> rather than reducing uh, the scale of the model to fit head, head to toe. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but one of which is composition. So as soon as you engage those outside edges of the rectangle, you're composing. So if I um, work life size, then I'm constantly aware of those edges and practicing composition in this 30 seconds, one minute, five minute gesture. So here's another gesture drawing that uh, with acrylic paint actually. And uh, it's a one minute, same 24 by 36. And here's one with some wash and chalk. So things are, um, you know, with gesture, like gesture poses, really should be poses that are kind of out of balance, um, going somewhere. Um, the drawings should feel that way too. This is uh, probably, I don't remember, maybe 20 minutes or might be 40 minutes, two sets. And this is one of my attempts at sustaining gesture for a long pose. So this, one, this is mixed media. Sorry again, the contrast is way too high on that projector. But uh, you get a sense of the drawing here, I think. So this is uh, mixed media with um, watercolor, charcoal, acrylic, and sometimes I use flash, if you guys know what flash is. Which is, I love flash. Flash is actually was, um, Bob, you probably know more about it than I do. It's before we had acrylic paint, there was flash. 
and it's water soluble, but the best thing about it is it dries matte. It doesn't have that gloss that acrylic paint does. How does it differ from gouache? It, um, you know how gouache will dissolve, you know, if water hits it at once you put it on the paper. Right. This doesn't, because this behaves just like acrylic paint. Oh, okay. So, except that it's just got a matte finish. So I like to draw with it sometimes. So, and this is an, a gesture drawing uh, with the flash and charcoal and soft pastel, 24 by 36 on gray paper. So this might be more of a five or 10 minute gesture, I don't remember. And this is a 24 by 36, one minute. So sometimes they're very quiet, like this one. And uh, so that's that empathetic, compassionate response again. That, and, and I like to remind myself of that a lot when I draw so that my drawings don't all look the same. So sometimes they're quiet and sometimes they're loud, you know. And I equate my marks with sound a lot because we should. It's all the same. And this is a longer uh, uh, study, probably an hour, and it's on gr uh, gr sorry, green rice paper. And, and it's, this is bigger than 30 by 40. It's pretty big. And so I thought, talk about that, uh, or just thinking about that empathetic response to our materials. One idea, uh, well, the idea I had about this is uh, I had that rice paper, and you know how fragile rice paper is. And it was this funny green color, but it was a very fragile, large sheet of paper. And I thought, I want to use that and make a really powerful drawing on this really thin, delicate paper. And so this model, she's a powerful human being, and I thought, I'm going to put her on this really delicate, thin piece of paper. And um, so that's what I mean by empathetic response, uh, empathetic choice of material. And this is a ink and charcoal gesture. And here's a longer study again. And um, maybe you can sense how I start these, the longer poses with gesture always. And this has gest a gesture drawing in it to begin with. And uh, it is a way for me to enter into the drawing in that uh, compassionate way. So I'm not just using my eyes, I'm using my heart, my gut, and my physical self all the time. This is uh, pastel, and I bet a lot of you have used that uh, beautiful, I love that sanded pastel paper that's way too expensive, but you can't not use it because it's so great. And this is soft pastel on that sanded pastel paper and charcoal, or a portrait, a couple of portraits. And watercolor, you can see the drips. And this is on that sanded pastel paper again, uh, soft pastel on a gray paper. Any question on the drawings? I'm gonna keep trudging forward. So I also make gesture paintings. So these are using, these are five minute, three minute, five minute, 10 minute, drawings of um, not each of these that you're going to see in different time frames or somewhere in there. And so they're really fast and they're made with that acrylic or and or flash and uh, water soluble crayon. I use all kinds of stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. These are, um, thanks, these are, what are they, 16 by 20 or something? They're, they're kind of like this, mm -hmm. you know. So these are not 24 by 36. Uh, I'll get there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I did these pretty recently, yeah. And um, here's another one. So my challenge to myself is often is to bring my drawing attitude into painting and to bring my painting attitude in when I draw so that there's not a divide between the two. And I think with these, I'm starting to get somewhere in that. Uh, figure paintings. So this is uh, oil. This is quite large six feet maybe tall and this is that same model that was on the um, rice paper and um, yeah Gloria if you've worked with her she's so fabulous and um, she had just been been through a mastectomy so that's what you see there and what a brave individual she continued figure modeling with all of that going on wow so um, and I've made there's another large painting I did of her um, uh, oil also, but uh, there's one. And here's another one. This is uh, around 30 by 40. I don't remember the sizes of everything. Here's a portrait painting. 
So you can see some of that gest gesture drawing entering into this. And, um, and this is for, there was a time where I was really interested in portraits of people with their pets. So <laughs> I have a couple there to show you. So uh, here's this guy with his poodle. <laughs> and they would both come into my studio, and the dog and the, and the owner, and it was, wow, is that fun. I, I would love to do more. I love the way he's looking at the dog. <laughs> yes, telling him to stay, stay. And the dog's like, what, what? Let's play. Give me something to eat. And, um, but, uh, and here's, here's Rick and Luther. Luther is the massive. And Luther is a big couch potato, so that he was pretty easy. And, uh, and so these are, these are a little bigger than the slide that you see there. And um, so sketchbook drawings of the zoo. Now we're going to scale down. Uh, and I draw, in my sketchbook, I draw a lot of anything, really, landscape and flower. You go to the conservatory and draw the plants. And, but I just have a selection from the zoo. And uh, I really miss the elephants at the zoo, but here's one of... Uh, uh, it was bamboo from Woodland Park Zoo, and so these are sketchbooks. So they, you know, sketchbook size, 11 by 17, 8 by 10, somewhere around there. And uh, and uh, you see the pastel on the left, and then on the right is the uh, charcoal. I love that the raptors. And like I said, I've been drawing there for so many years. It's it's interesting, you know, because all the animals, of course, are individuals, and you get to learn their by just watching, sense their personalities, and it's really fun. And that's Watoto, the African that lived at uh, Woodland Park. And there's me working. So I thought I'd show that to you can see the sense of scale and me working on my sketchbook. Uh, there they are again. Little Ellie's. Oh, I put a lot in here, didn't I? Well, you see my affinity, and I missed them. Um, and here is the dwarf crocodile that used to live. They um, actually had this, that crocodile lived at Woodland Park Zoo for like 40 years and now they shipped it, um, shipped him off to another zoo. But anyhow, there's a couple drawings of him. And, uh, and I, I consider go, drawing in my sketchbook and especially at the zoo and, you know, I'm at my, like I'm in my studio. This is my place of study. This is a place where I, have, I pose questions to myself. And um, it's not just to go there and make a drawing of an elephant or of a bird, but I have a question. Like, and my question here was, how do I make marks that fly? What would that look like? And how do I really make a mark that really flies? And so if you know Woodland Park, Woodland Park Zoo and the Willowong Station, you walk in and there's budgies and cockatiels flying overhead. And uh, I would go there day after day and draw them, draw them, draw them, <laughs> wait for them to fly. And so I have a lot of drawings of these flying birds. And uh, so here's a couple of them. There's two budgies. It's not about what they look like. It's about how they are. So there's a perfect example of that. And a bat and a snake having its lunch. If you can see the lunch in there. <laughs> I was very excited because that's the green python. And it never moves. And I happened to walk in right when it was being fed, and it went right into action. And I was like, oh, "Where's my paper?" I was drawing, drawing, drawing. And uh, that was that was exciting. Uh, plein air works. So here I am doing landscape paintings, and I understand that there's a lot of you who paint. I, I go out and uh, paint landscape. So you know what what the deal is. I love the wind and battling the wind, and I rain is, you know, rain, but wind's the worst, and bugs and all sorts of things. And hopefully all of those sensations filter into and, and you can sense in the paintings. But these, as you can see in the slide of me painting, they're quite small, and often because I'm backpacking them in. And I love uh, painting on, on the Olympic Peninsula. And here's some trees. I wanted to make a, a landscape painting that did not have a horizon line. So I looked up into the tree. <laughs> and this is Susha Island again. Oil. And some self-portrait paintings. I need to speed up a little bit. So here I am. Uh, the one, this one on your left was when I was in grad school. So self-portrait painting really goes back to then for me. 
And that actually was my thesis, was on self-portrait painting and the different facades that we have, the different ways that we look at different situations. So I look differently when I now versus when I later tonight when I crash on the couch. Then I look like someone else. So that was my idea was to tap into that. And I've continued self-portrait painting um, since then. It's not my primary focus, although right currently it kind of is. And uh, but uh, I've got into attributes and Venus pose here, and then holding the iris and uh, and uh, paintbrushes. This one dropping the rose with the peacock feather. So uh, exploring the idiom of figure painting and using uh, props as symbol symbols. And this is a gesture painting of myself painting. And it's about, uh, it's a little bit smaller than that, but it's class close to the scale. And here, this is a more recent one on burlap. And I'm a, a new fan of burlap. That is great. I don't know if you've ever painted on it. It's a battle, but I love that. So this is actually acrylic on, on uh, burlap. When you do burlap, do you norm normally use acrylic? Normally, I've only I just started this burlap thing. Okay. I'm learning it, so I start I, the I've, uh, what I've the paintings I made on it so far have been acrylic. Okay. Because there's all those holes in it, and it just soaks right through, and it's like <laughs> interesting to figure it out. This is on cotton canvas, yeah, and this, this is, is stretched. Yeah, it's stretched. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I haven't tried it on a board. But that would be an interesting thing. So this is a self-portrait again. Um, that's about the scale of it. It's pretty recent, this year. And these are small. They, but the, the, if you can keep in mind, the heads are about life size. So 16 by 20, 18 by 24, they kind of range uh, in that <coughs> arena. And this is oil. And I love texture. So there's a lot of textures, texture in these. And here's another one. And yes, people always say, why don't you smile, Barbara? <laughs> well, you stare in a mirror for hours on end. You don't really feel like smiling that whole <laughs> And uh, here I am with a hat on, thinking about Edvard Munch, if you can, with those colors. And here's a recent one, uh, oil. And there's a lot of texture in that one, actually and uh, portrait drawings. So I've made a lot of, done a lot of portrait commissions and I've made uh, installations about portraiture, but just to give you a little snapshot of me making portrait drawings, um, this is around 30 by 40 inches. It's mixed media watercolor with chalk and um, this is about a three hour sitting. And you can see the gesture drawings I did beforehand on newsprint to learn the individual and I have them look in different directions. And so I get a sense of how they move and help them to get comfortable with me looking at them and for both of us to kind of settle in. And then I make the drawing you see on the right. And all of that is about a three hour time frame. And, um, and I've kind of worked on that time frame because it's an accessible one for people who commission me to make their portrait drawings. And uh, so here's another one, Mahmoud. And can you tell he's a theater professor? And here's the gestures. Really liked how the gestures came out just as drawings themselves of him. So it's about the how, not the what. You know, how he is, not what he looks like. Uh, but wow, is it beautiful when you get the two of those things to come together, right? The how and the what together. So, and this is, uh, uh, she was another professor uh, at Siena College in Albany, New York. And um, drawing of her. And one more, you can see the gestures there. Now these are a little more recent and these are smaller scale than those you just saw and um, still about the same time frame, watercolor and um, sepia chalk. And I did, uh, I, had, I came up with this idea of, I called it Family of Faces and it was a project I created for myself. Uh, and I ended up making uh, 60 portraits in 30 days. <laughs> Crazy, not going to do that again, noted. That was hard. Uh, they all came to my studio and sat for me, and this is just a selection of them, but man, did I learn watercolors. 
I was not so versed in watercolor paint till I did these. And these were towards the end. This mother, I knew I was drawing her, the woman in the middle. She walked in my studio door. I thought maybe you could also draw my two sons. And I thought, oh my God, okay. So I did a whole family in that one sitting. And there, there they are. Uh, it was a really great project. In the same project, uh, you know, pets are a family too. So I had some people say, I know it's a family, it's, you're looking for people, but you know, these are our family members, and sure, bring them in, I love drawing dogs. So I uh, drew Carrie on the left and Bug on the right. <laughs> a greyhound and a Frenchie. And there I am working at my easel. Give me a sense of scale. And uh, that is, those are the slides that I brought. Yeah. <laughs> in any of my workshops and things you can I have flyers up here that you can grab or you can leave your email on a piece of paper or you can write down my email there barbara.fugate at gmail.com and just email me I'll put you on the list but next up I'm going to draw Bob uh, for, for you and we'll see what happens <laughs> All right. Hopefully, uh, what's that hopefully you'll improve it yeah. <laughs> Make it look distinguished. Yes. Hi, Are you guys giving me assignments? <laughs> Not fair. I thought he was too. I thought I think he thought he was too. Yeah, I think that they decided that he could watch that as he was a model. Oh, that's she knows about yeah. it. She knows in bed. I didn't want to mess with the mic. Yeah. Warm enough, Bob? <laughs> pressure changes so you get a lot of variety of line with them and they're they are smooth on the paper so you can draw quickly and it's essential for gesture so uh, I thought I would start with a couple of gesture drawings of Bob and then go into another one with different materials Newsprint paper that I'm working on. Okay. A gesture drawing uh, is done quickly. 
It's also about exploring. So you'll notice that going on with my line and jumping around the paper. Is one of the goals, and this is something I, if I remember right, Nicolaides says in his book as well, that gesture teaches us to, and one of our goals always is to draw everything at once. Mm -hmm. now, how do you do that? That's tall order. One way that I've found is to skip around a lot. A little bit here, a little bit there. So you don't finish one place and then, then move to another, but you try to get bits and pieces of most of it, what fits on your paper. So not lifting, just applying various pressure. Say that again? Not lifting away. Oh, the, yeah, I stay on the paper, yep. Just the pressure. Is that what you mean? Yeah, stay on the paper. Um, I call it staying, uh, keeping the connection. You also don't 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 remove material. You're you you continue to apply it. You gesture. Know, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I do, but gesture. You know, I mean, I'm about done with this one. Is um, about being fast. So there's not a lot of time for if you mean like erasing and things. But uh, I do do that sometimes. Is that what you meant? I, I thought that with a question was 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 you know you you don't lighten the tones by erasing. They're less pressure. Oh that's no, it's thought, done at, yeah. the, at the time right, with yeah. the pressure change. Yeah. So that's one. Oh wow. <laughs> so uh, and you know the physicality of drawing a painting is important to me and that's part of the scale so that you see how I'm kind of back and forth like this and I'm using my whole arm, my whole body. You want to change where you're looking? Okay. <laughs> you look away from me. <laughs> okay, you right? Sure. Up, down, right, left, wherever you want to look. I think I'll probably just do these, this one, two of these short ones, and then I'll move on to, on different paper, different materials. And um, I often do sometimes use a chamois, and so that, then I start wiping back mm -hmm. too sometimes. And the chamois I see is more of a drawing tool. It adds marks. It's not about erasing, um, really. Sometimes you use it for that, help erase. And, um, but you know, mark making, making lines, marks, I like the word mark making a little better than line, it sounds a little limiting, uh, but it, um, you know, it's, it always amazes me with this little chunk of charcoal in my fingers and the universe of possibilities there of what you can say with it. And, you know, our drawings and our paintings, you know, we're communicating with them, and it's a language that we're always developing. That's how I think of it. And uh, drawing, often my drawings are ahead of my paintings, and my drawings will sort of pave a way for the paintings, a question or a way of doing things or thinking about things. And um, so variety of line, you can see that I'm using it now, is a way of kind of exploring and figuring something out, but it's also about um, sound, words, thoughts. You know, it's about all of those things. And how can they be communicated the best, most successfully? And uh, I also think of drawing, maybe you can notice, uh, uh, notice it in these drawings I've just done in front of you, that I think of drawing and sculpture pretty interchangeably. That drawing is a very sculptural process. 
It's a very, and we should be thinking as a sculptor thinks three dimensionally all the time. And our marks, they travel in and out of the paper in a three dimensional way because the paper is three dimensional, it's not actually two dimensional. So there's another one above. So, um, our question. Yeah. So, I noticed when you both times when you started out, you were going vertically. Were you, what were you, how, what's going on with you there? So that I don't focus on his face. Uh, Connect the head to the body, body to head. So, I see everything at once. So, I'm seeing all shoulders, neck, skull, ears, all together. It seems that you were also adjusting the proportions of where you were going of course. Yeah. Yep. All of that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's try. So I brought a, a sheet of, it's a little bit smaller, but a sheet of BFK Reeves, which does not like to be erased on, unfortunately. BFK Reeves, printmaking paper. Oh, I love, and Fabriano. Rosa Pina is my very favorite paper. And I sadly, I found out I went to Daniel Smith to get another, uh, and buy um, many sheets at once. And they said, they stopped making it. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> so I've been buying it for years. And like in France, the mill, they just went, I don't know. Like, you gotta be kidding me. So all they had left were a few half sheets, I bought them up. But this is the FK Reeves. So I'm trying to find my other favorite paper. I haven't found it yet. Okay, but we'll see what this does. That's good. Okay. Perfect. So this is uh, Credit Color Sepia Dark Lead, and I love. This is a water soluble. I should be selling these. I should work for Credit Color. <laughs> so, uh, um, and I love to draw with these. They're a little small. They don't, you know, they're not as big and easy to hold like that. Um, the charcoal that I was just working with. <coughs> but you can see how light the line is to begin with. And um, so they, you know, it helps to just to kind of get things going without making any commitment. Easy to change because it's such a light line. And I can skirt around and kind of play with where things might um, end up. And uh, And actually, by the way, you know, the question about me, you know, stick, keeping my hand on the paper, that has to do with, with connecting with my uh, model. And also, it is a way, actually, of sight measuring. It's a kinetic way to sight measure. So you're, you're locating where things are in relation to each other by way of just moving there and using speed and distance to help um, find it. And especially in a, something like what I'm drawing for you right now, and I only have about five more minutes, so I don't have time to do all that sight measuring, That because um, I do sight measure as well. Say that again? You never lose your spot. That's exactly right. Well, sometimes I do. But uh, um, it helps to not get lost if you stay on the paper. That's that connection. You stay connected with what you see. Um, but I do, you know, once I get things happening, then I step away from the paper and get my hand off of it and look at it from a distance and all that. But um, I'm trying to be quick right now, and hopefully this makes sense in the end. And uh, so I'm keeping on the paper. So, and you also see how the lack of detail right now, and that's, you know, allowing me to figure out where things are when to, uh, in relation to each other without, um, you know, if you get too detailed too fast, then it might be in the wrong spot, and then you've wasted all that time, and you've got to erase. But once I uh, feel like I'm kind of getting somewhere, then I'll start bearing down and get more specific. And... Uh, as I'm starting to do now. And uh, 
I'm going to show you a little bit of mixed media here, so I'm trying to get up to that point. You've got about 10 minutes. So oh, I do. Yeah. Thought I had like nine. <coughs> Thanks for that. And, um, you know, portrait, I bet many of you have made portraits. Yeah? yeah. And you know how, in this, I wish this, the person who told me this didn't tell me at the time that they did, because I, I was ju just beginning to study drawing and painting, but they said something like, but it is true. Especially with portraits, man, one millimeter matters. You know? Oh, yeah. It's like you get one millimeter off and it just doesn't look right. And, uh, but then I found a, a um, quote by Sargent. And you know all those society portraits that he made. And there's a quote by Sargent that says, a portrait painting is a painting where there is a little something not right about the mouth. Yeah. And I thought, oh, thank you. <laughs> and then I was like relieved, like, okay. It's good to have something a little wonky and uh, give me some license, I guess. But you know what? But I think that a lot of that, what he's saying, is that that's the artist's prerogative, but it's also about movement, you know, that um, as the model moves, then, uh, you know, to capture that, like Rodin. Rodin's sculpture is all about movement. And uh, that's why he drew all those dancers. And uh, his, his sculptures, if you really study them, the anatomically they're impossible. Because what he's done is he's put together, sewed together a uh, figure moving in spa space over time. So you're seeing, just like a Cubist painting, you're seeing them um, different positions. In one? In one sculpture. Once you finish this, do you ever go back to it, Pablo? Uh, what do you mean? Like these two drawings you've done just as a photo. Oh, well, something like this, if I do, it